Good morning. Uh, this is House Ways and Means. It is September 16th. I think it's Wednesday. Um, and we're going to, we have an hour or so scheduled right now. Uh, the subject being the December 1st letter um, and possible legislation, temporary legislation um, um, on the letter that we were looking at uh, off and on over the last week or so. Um, we've invited um, uh, Craig Bolio to, to actually to speak, but we've also um, Jeff Francis and Sue Siglowski and I think uh, one or two others are here, Bill Bates. Um, I haven't scheduled testimony exactly, but what I'd like to do is to is to make sure that we um, and Brad, I see you here too, um, that we um, give everybody a chance to um, maybe not as formally as usual, but give people a chance to um, uh, make comments about the letter, whether it's a good idea to do it and whether we're on the right track in the way we're doing it. Um, if we don't make a decision about it this morning, I think we're not going to get anything done this year. So I want to stress um, that time is, um, it, the time to do this is now, um, if we're going to do it. So um, we don't really have time to um, spend any more days on it. Not that we don't have the days, but that the legislative clock is running out. Um, and in that uh, connection, um, if we come up with language that the committee all agrees on, um, I think what we're likely to do is use a Senate bill to um, amend a Senate bill that's in our committee so that we can move it more quickly because I'm not sure that we'll have time to move a committee bill at this point. Um, so before we start actually working on the bill, let me see if anybody on the committee has any announcements that they want to start with. Um, I don't see anybody raising their hand. Um, I, the, we're gonna stop at 10. Um, unfortunately, I've got a telemedicine appointment that I need to do, so well, I'm gonna have to stop. Um, if we haven't finished, we'll reconvene at 11. Um, and we've got some time set aside at 11. So um, hopefully we'll get done. And uh, Jim, Maslin. Not that it's very important, Janet and everybody, but after a month of wearing the same tie, I decided to put on a different tie today. I don't know well, if anybody noticed at all or cares, but <laughs> here we are. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is start with Abby and have her go over the language the way we had it um, most recently so that we're all looking at the same thing and understanding the same thing. So let me do that. Um, and then um, see if Mark has a couple comments. And then what I'd like to do is ask Craig to comment on it. And Craig, I'm focused specifically on you because this is the tax department's letter. Um, so I feel that um, your uh, voice on this is a critical one. So, okay, Abby. Great, good morning. Um, for the record, Abby Shepard, Office of the Legislative Council. Uh, okay. Great, thank you, Sorcha, for pulling up the language. So this um, hasn't been put in any sort of format as an amendment or a committee bill, so it's still um, very uh, in, in movement. Um, the first, there are two subsections to this that we went over yesterday. The first is findings and purpose um, and starts by laying out current law in the first two sections and explains that current statutory requirements for the commissioner of tax, taxes is that by um, no later than December 1st, um, the commissioner must calculate and recommend the state education property tax rates. So for fiscal year 22 um, for this upcoming December 1st. And in making that recommendation, the commissioner must um, take into account the any projected fiscal year 21 deficit. And the commissioner must also assume that the stabilization reserve is maintained at 5%. So those are the current requirements in setting the tax rates. This language then um, lays out the intent that was um, expressed in Act 122 that was passed in June, um, that the General Assembly intends to address any projected deficit by taking any ma manner of um, the following actions, which could include applying reversions or drawing down the stabilization reserve, as well as using federal funds. Um, the 
on starting on line 15, really the meat of the intent here um, that was laid out in this first subsection is that uh, the actions in Act 122 um, are the expressed intent of the General Assembly to relieve school boards from having the burden of accounting for this projected fiscal year 21 potential deficit um, through school board budgeting decisions. So given that this Act 122 intent conflicts with the current statutory requirements, the General Assembly um, would be imposing new requirements on the December 1st letter and requires the commissioner to calculate um, statewide education property tax rates for fiscal year 22 in, as set out in the second subdivision. So that's subdivision or subsection B. So subsection B talks about the December 1st letter for fiscal year 22 in setting the rates um, for the commissioner's recommendation. The first aspect that would be um, different from current, st current statute is to disregard any potential deficit, any projected fiscal year 21 deficit. And the second assumption the commissioner would make is that the stabilization reserve is maintained at its current amount as of December 1st on or before. So rather than the 5%, Additionally, this would preclude assuming that the stabilization reserve is used to reduce any projected deficit. And I know that there are some questions about whether the first subsection should be in there, what, what intent needs to be expressed, um, but really the meat of what is being required in this language is in subsection B. Great, Abby, thank you. Um, Mark, do you have anything you want to sort of throw in at this point by way of explanation? I know, you know, I know the committee heard from you yesterday, but I'm trying to make sure that everybody has the same information before we launch into a discussion about this. So um, I, I prepared an education fund outlook that attempts to illustrate why there's a relationship between the deficit and the stabilization reserve okay. or, and, and, and um, I can go over that, but if there's if, if people are comfortable with the language right now, we don't need to do this right now. I don't think I, I can. I, I sent source of the sheet, but um, it's up to you whether you want me to delve into it or not. Um, let, let's take a couple minutes and put it up there and just. Um, yeah, I think I'd be good. It, um, yeah, so Sorsha, could you could you pop the balance sheet up? Yes, give me a second. I did post it, but my connection must be weak with the server oh. because it's not showing up on the website. So I'm going to pull it up okay. from your email. Sorry, give me a second. Actually, Mark, do you have it handy? It might be easier if I just make you the co-host. I, I had trouble sharing it yesterday, but I can try. I do have All it on right, my I'll try to get it reposted. Okay. So, so why don't why don't we hear from Craig while we're working on the technology of getting that posted, and then we'll um, if if there are questions, we'll have it up there, and we can um, we can go to those then. Um, uh, sorry, George. I was just going to say it is posted and openable on our website. Right yeah, now. I've got it open as well. Um, I don't know if everybody is able to do that. Um, so, uh, thanks. Uh, Craig. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, committee. Uh, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the time. So, you know, I think I was, I was looking at two uh, big questions uh, as I uh, looked at the language. The first think that you guys had asked me is, do I get it? Do I understand what it's uh, mechanically trying to achieve? Uh, I think the answer to that is yes. Um, and so then the second question is, is it a good idea, in my opinion? Uh, and I, I think my general answer to that is yes. Um, I do have a few thoughts um, and, and maybe some tweaks that, that we could make. Um, you know, let me, let me say clearly, certainly it should come as no surprise that uh, the administration supports the goal of not having a, a big property tax uh, spike uh, in fiscal year 22. So we're all on the same page there. Uh, and I also totally understand the predicament that you folks are in that full accounting is not going to be available by the time you folks uh, adjourn. Uh, and so what do you do? 
Um, so I, again, I get the predicament there. You know, two alternatives that I might uh, propose that the committee could consider. Uh, one would be instead of only calculating it uh, without the deficit to calculate it both ways, one with the deficit and one without, and that would give sort of a, a range of options. It would also um, provide a, a contrast of here's where things would shake out without intervention, uh, and here's where we think things will shake out because there has been intervention. Uh, the other alternative uh, may be that we will have some insights, uh, not, not complete insights, but some insights into, for instance, CRF eligible expenses by the time that we write the December 1st letter. And so we could try to do an accurate uh, accounting at the time of what we have to see how that would how that would impact rates. Um, and, and the other thing that I would say on just on the December one letter generally, maybe not this this specific language, but certainly we're hoping uh, that it will help continue the conversation of uh, I think the the bumpy road ahead that we have on the Ed Fund. Um, and so my intention, I think the the uh, intention will be to bring some recommendations that fit within Act 122 that we can we can uh, continue the discussion of how to handle this in the medium and long term. But you know, if at the end of the day the committee really wants to take the path that's in the language right now, um, I understand it and, and we can live with it. But I would I would just ask consideration for those alternatives. Uh, let me see if there's any questions. Uh, Scott. Hey, Craig, um, those two um, options that you talk about, um, does, the, does the tax commissioner have the flexibility in the writing of the tax letter and the narrative to discuss those two possibilities? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, my read would be yes. Um, so I don't know if you folks have to put it in the session law. Um, you know, if that's the approach that we just have the understanding that we're gonna do that, I think that's a viable path as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Peter. Uh, yeah, Craig, I, I think you use the word alternatives, uh, but I think what you mean is add-ons. In other words, you're not suggesting to displace what the committee has uh, tried to convey so far. Uh, yeah, I certainly appreciate that clarification, Representative. I would fully agree. Oh, George. Yeah, I, I, I'm just worried that if we, in the letter, show both, where we would be with, you know, with including the deficit, and without that, we're going to um, cause a lot of heartburn among the school board, because it's not, it's not clear that we are saying, if we, if that's both in the letter, it's both things are in the letter. It's not unless it's written very specifically <clears throat> to say this is what it would have been had we included the deficit, which we are not doing. But if it, they're placed as two alternatives in the letter, I, I think that is going to send some people off the off the cliff. So I, I'd, I'd be very hesitant about that. And I can guarantee that any news stories would be about the higher amount. I do think it complicates the messaging a little bit. I, I take that point. Uh, Jim, Hansen. and and I want to be sure I get the I get the school boards and superintendents sure. in on um, the discussion just briefly, as well. Um, so. I'd agree with with George, and when we have a moment, would be um, interested in hearing what Mark um, would have to say about the same thing. Because um, as yesterday, we were trying to convey. Um, um, I'm not sure the, the word I'm looking for, but a, a calm, straightforward, here's what we're going to do message to school so that they had predictability. Thanks. Um, Scott. Craig, as far as the, um, the, the deficit, um, assuming that it was, it was, we followed this language and it was not included in the yield rates. Um, I wouldn't think we would, be able to completely ignore it in the tax letter what thinking that if we did would that create um problems with the rating agencies if we just 
like try to hide a, a deficit? Is there a way that we could thoughtfully say, um, you know, explain it um, for that purpose? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and I, I don't think we're, well, I, I don't want to speak for the committee, but my reading is not that we will completely ignore it in the letter. It's just that it won't factor into the math. So I guess my take is that, um, you know, we would, we would speak to that in, in the narrative to say, um, this, this figure is not in the math. This is why it's not in the math. So I don't think it would be completely ignored. And I would agree with you that, uh, doing that would not be a good idea. Um, let me see if some of our other participants um, are, are wanting to weigh in on the discussion here. Um, and I'm looking particularly at AOE, uh, superintendent, school boards. Uh, somebody wanna jump forward? I, I'll jump forward just very quickly if, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Brad James, Agency of Education, for the record. Um, I think I think the, the messaging you're sending out is very positive. I think that will help quite a bit. Um, I would actually because there's two suggestions and clarification on page one, um, and this is kind of more for Abby and you guys to listen on page one. Yeah, on line 16 and 17, talk about the, the deficit. It says, actions outlined in Act 122 with respect to a projected deficit are intended to relieve school boards of the burden of accounting for any project. I would just suggest you make Brad, that you're, that you're, a little you're, clearer Brad. and make sure yes. the projected Brad. deficit you're talking about. Uh, am I breaking Brad, up? Mm. Yes. Can you uh, shut off the video and because we want to hear yeah. the words? Thank yeah. you. Okay. So, so I'm not. I'm not sure where I. Can you hear me clearly now? Yeah. Start. Start. Start, start okay. on page. Start okay. on line sixteen. That's uh, where you. Yeah. Were. I'm. I'm, go I'm going to read it to you as as Abby had it drafted, and I didn't get a chance to send this to her. It says the actions outlined in Act 122 with respect to a projected deficit are intended to relieve school boards of the burden of accounting for any projected deficit through school budgeting decisions. I would suggest making it clear that the projected deficit you are referencing is strictly the education fund and not their own deficit. Um, I just know how questions sometimes bubble up in the background and that I have to put them out. So I would suggest just adding in the, with respect to projected deficit in the education fund are intended to relieve school boards of the burden of accounting for any such projected deficit through school budgeting decisions. Yeah. Um, I will happily send that to Abby so people can see it, but it just, I, I, I do know that people sometimes think differently than how the words are, are intended to be read. Yep, that's why we're getting input on it. Uh, I think those are uh, clearly we're talking about the Ed Fund def projected deficit, and I, um, I'm assuming that the committee will be in agreement with that. All right, I'll, I'll send that to Abby and Mark. Okay. Uh, you had another one, uh, uh, or was that it? That that was it. I think I think the messaging is very good, um, and I think that will be helpful. And I think again, um, agreeing with what you all are saying that keeping it keeping the math as simple as possible and just having the one number in there, I think is probably better than having two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jim and Scott. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, Brad. I had exactly the same thought reading this over this morning, and it's the word any preceding deficit that concerned me. And I think your proposed language is excellent. We'll fix that. Scott? Yeah, I'm actually looking at the, um, the same sentence that Brad just brought up. And I agree with his um, input there. I wonder if though, if for clarity's sake, at the end of that sentence, we should say um, in FY22. Yeah, that sound agreeable to everybody. I think that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Good. So, Abby, we'll make both of those changes. Uh, thank you, Brad. Um, so let me let me go back to. Um, I, I'm gonna keep listing off all our guests here: uh, Jeff Francis, Jeff Bannon. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, this is Jeff Francis. I'm happy, yeah. happy okay. to go next. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so, 
first of all, thank you. I'm in agreement with everything that's been said so far. Um, Brad's comments with regard to the intent here um, resonates with me. So I'm in agreement that this is something that you should do. And I'm appreciative of the fact that you're doing it. Um, I also had comments that centered on line 15, 16, and 17, mm -hmm. um, and have actually just sent to Sorsha a potential consideration for an adjustment to the language that starts on line 15. And the intent is to make it clear um, what role the school boards play in this. So the current sentence, and I see Source is going to put that up, says the actions outlined in Act 122 with respect to a projected deficit are intended to relieve school boards of the burden of accounting for any projected deficit through school budgeting decisions. You've already addressed the term any, um, and you've made it clear um, uh, the time period. I got hung up on the term of accounting because accounting can have a double meaning. In one instance, it means, um, measurement and the actual accounting of. And in another instance, it means take responsibility for. And I think that the intent of the language, at least as I understood it, was that you wanted to absolve school boards of the responsibility for responding to any projected deficit. So I don't have any pride of ownership here. I would willingly accept it if you say no, if you think that the current language is better but my eye was drawn to the, the phrase burden of accounting. And I wondered whether responsibility for responding to was a way that would be more clearly understood by folks at the local school district level, business managers, superintendents, and school board members. So I'll pause there and let people reflect on that suggestion. Um, thank you. And, uh, you know, this is intent language. This is not the operational language. Um, and um, I, speaking just for myself, I will do whatever communicates most successfully to the school board. So um, whatever, whatever, whichever version they're more comfortable with is fine with me. Um, Peter. Uh, just, I think for Jeff's uh, point, instead of using the word accounting, uh, what you would want to do is the school boards needn't incorporate and use the word incorporate uh, the deficit into blah, 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 their calculations and so on. Just get away from that word accounting. Uh, Sue, do you want to um, respond to Jeff's suggestion? Yes, thank you very much for having uh, me this morning. Sue Siglowski, Vermont School Boards Association. Um, we do agree with that uh, suggestion to use a, a, a word other than accounting um, and also with the um, suggestions that were offered by Brad to clarify this language um, and Representative Beck as well. So great. thank you okay. for the opportunity to uh, convey that to you. Perfect, that sounds great. I mean, this is really about communicating and reassuring, frankly. And so we wanna choose the right words. Um, and if those, are the, if those are better words, that's fine with me. Um, that committee in agreement with that? I'm looking for head nods, I'm getting, getting some, so um, good. Uh, so did you have any other comments or Jeff, did you have any? I just well, had one yeah. further yeah comment um, regarding the December 1 letter. Um, yep. We do, do agree with uh, the points that were raised by Representative Till about um, how school boards will be um, focusing in on that letter and that the language is very important um, to not have it be um, set forth as alternatives, but just have it be very clear. So thank Good. you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and Jeff Francis, I've, I've got Jeff Fannin here too, who also wants to speak, I think. Is that right? But uh, no, I'm all, I'll, I'll, you're all, I'm all set. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Uh, Jeff Fannin. Hi. Uh, thank you for giving me a few minutes here. Uh, Jeff Fannin from Vermont NEA. Uh, good morning. So I agree. <laughs> We're all in agreement here. It's a very agreeable good. morning. Um, good. Yeah, it is good. Uh, <clears throat> I do think that uh, giving folks an alternative. Um, 
well understandable i I'd, i i would i see the need or, or the, the desire for it i don't think it helps the communications bit at all so i, I would stick with just one to be very clear in the messaging we got enough going on in the schools i think they have enough on their plate they don't need to be contending with people asking them questions of what if and what if you know what about that so i agree with all the comments by uh Representative Beck uh, and, and that. The one I note that uh, Representative Anthony mentioned the word calculating it on page two on line six, that is what the letter actually calls for is the calculation. So maybe that's the, the right word to be used um, to address the, the accounting question mark. So with that said, I'm happy to answer questions, but I think it's a good, uh, I applaud and appreciate the effort doing so to putting Great. out the letter. Great. Um, any, any questions for, uh, for, for anybody who's been speaking, I guess, um, I wait, uh, uh, Emily. Um, I'd love to come back to Craig about, um, this idea of sort of clarity versus options. And if you, um, have further responses to that. I, I, so, I mean, one of, one of the reasons that, that. I'm even proposing these these additional calculations is that, you know, at least in my eyes, and, and I would guess I, I've been the steward of the December one letter once, so I, I can't say that uh, I'm a historical expert on this, but my, my goal is always to have the math be a very straightforward exercise, sort of bean counting, so to speak. Um, so this is an, an unusual year, right? So it might be that uh, it, that it's worthwhile to tweak that bean counting exercise. Um, this would just allow us to do the straightforward math and then also do uh, the math that, that we hope sends the right message. Um, again, I, I don't have strong feelings on this. If, if the committee's preference is to do uh, the one calculation, we can do that. I'll send Emily. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Peter and Jim. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to return to a worry that Mark uh, advanced a day or two ago, namely, uh, to, and this, this reflects, I think, Commissioner Bolio's purpose, one of his purposes. Mark opined uh, last week when we first uh, addressed this, he was worried that um, school boards might not uh, be as uh, penurious, that is to say, uh, they might um, not worry so much about the fund deficit uh, in terms of trying to uh, squeeze as much value as they could uh, out of uh, their work and leave uh, as much uh, internal surplus as possible. I, it's an incentive question, and I don't know whether uh, what Commissioner Bolio is suggesting might uh, go a ways to address Mark's worry that people might uh, take advantage of the fact that they're being relieved, essentially, uh, of the uh, uh, the hurt of a rise in property taxes, given the fact of the matter, the fact of the deficit. And so maybe Mark could comment on that. Thanks. Um, Jim, you want to I don't know if Mark wants to weigh in on that question. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't remember saying that, um, but yeah. um, I don't, I don't think I have anything to add. Add to that. Uh, Excuse me for jumping in, but that was in response to my question about why don't we just go ahead and set the tax rate now. That was when Mark said that. Oh, not in connection with this language. Uh, Jim and George. Oh, you are uh, George. You already spoke. Um, Jim. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I just soon stick with the um, the way we have it without the alternative. But there's nothing to prevent the tax department from. Um, working up on the side at an alternative calculation and letting us know. I mean, I'm not sure people want to see it, but it could be done, but I wouldn't want it as part of the, the letter. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I, I actually feel pretty good about the language that we have with the um, changes that we've talked about. Yeah, um, excellent. Uh, Jeff Francis's so. suggestion and Scott made a couple and so on. Um, and I think what, what I'd like to do, um, uh, let me look around the room and make sure, my, the room, my screen, um, and see whether anybody uh, has any, w w still wants to say something, has any uh, anything additional that they'd like to add. And if not, 
Um, what I'd like to do is to give Abby a chance to redraft it. Um, and then if we can get it voted today, that would be wonderful. As I said earlier, um, what I think I'm gonna do, if it's agreeable with people is use, um, I think it's S127. Sersha, can you double check that for me? Um, no, S27, S27. Who would have thought that we had a Senate bill sitting on the wall? It has nothing to do with education whatsoever. Um, it's a home health bill, um, but it's um, a little short bill that we don't need. Um, we addressed it in another bill, so that it's just sitting there. Um, and if it's okay with people, my thought is to put this language on that bill um, so that we don't have to wait for a committee bill. Um, there seems to be general consensus that this, would, this is a positive move um, and may help some of the concerns about budgeting uh, this fall. And I also wanna say that we understand that um, school boards have uh, a huge task in front of them uh, putting these budgets together. And this is not gonna solve your problems, but we hope that at least um, takes away one set of concerns, um, which is what we're trying to do here. But um, we, we're doing it in full realization that there's a great deal that you're still having to deal with. Um, so does that seem like a good path to everybody? Um, I got lots of thumbs up. That's the way we vote now. Um, so uh, Abby, why, why don't you go ahead and um, do whatever needs to be done on that. Um, I wanna thank everybody for coming. You're welcome to stay um, and you're welcome to hang around. If we, uh, Abby, how long do you think it'll take to do it? Sorry, having trouble getting the mute off. Um, Madam Chair, I did just send you an updated draft but it doesn't have the lead in language. I don't know if you wanna just look at what was just discussed or if you wanna wait till I have it in a amendment it, format. It's, to, oh, oh, the lead in language? No, I don't worry about the lead in language. You mean the, the that we're amending S27? That yes, our, I, I, that. I think our committee will trust that it works the way it should. Um, I don't think we right. need to see that. Um, I, I, if anybody I, wants to wait, um, please speak and let me know. So I did just send um, language yeah. then to you. Oh, good. Uh, oh, wonderful. You and Sorsha. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So let's put that up. Uh, George. Yeah. Um, we were going to hear from Mark back when we started yeah. um, about the, uh, ed, you know, how something on the Ed Fund balance sheet. And I didn't know if we still needed to do that or not. I don't know that we need to, but if people want to, we will. It was it was more setting the table so that everybody was understanding what was happening. Um, but it feels like everybody pretty much does. So um, again, yeah, I mean that's fine with me. I just yeah okay. Now, let me see if anybody raises their hand and says they want to hear it. Hear from we always want to hear from you, Mark, but maybe not this minute. Um, okay. Um, so uh, Abby, why don't you go through the language and then. Um, if somebody decides they want to hear from Mark, we'll go right back to that. Great. So this is, um, if you can scroll down, Sorsha, down, it starts on lines uh, 16. The only changes that have been made, if we keep scrolling, it should uh, show up in, okay. So I've highlighted the new language. So the new section reads the actions outlined in Act 122 with respect to a projected fiscal year 2021 deficit in the education fund are intended to relieve school boards of the responsibility for responding to a projected fiscal year 21 deficit through school budgeting decisions for fiscal year 2022. Uh, Abby, the only thing I would change is on line 18, rather than the word A, I would say to the. Okay. Uh, sure. It just seems weird to have the word A in there somehow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, comments from, uh, frankly, well, committee members, but all our guests as well. Anyone have any thoughts about the language? Give people a minute to raise their hands. George. Yeah, I think the to the projected fiscal year 21 deficit in the education fund on line 18 might, I mean, we want to be really clear that it is just the education fund deficit. 
or somebody used the word such, which is better than the and better than a, and then you don't have to repeat that again. At some point, we were yes, thinking yes. That the words don't mean anything anymore. Um, but, such would be great. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I had the same same comment as George there, just to be crystal clear. Yeah, is the word such yeah. work for you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Anyone else have anything? I'm pausing, just giving it, sometimes it takes a minute for people to raise their hands. So um, uh, effective date on this, Abby? Would you like it to be effective on passage or October 1st? Um, I, think I'm I think on passage. Right now it's doesn't have an effective date, right? So we would need one. So let's just make it effective on passage. Uh, do people want to see that before they vote on this? Uh, Robin, you had a question. Thanks. Um, sorry, when it was up there, there were two places where it said a uh, projected deficit. Are we changing the a uh, to a the <laughs> in both places? I've lost the, oh, because I don't have the version. You don't have it, right. It's on the, on the screen. I think awesome. that the first A would make more sense. Um, the actions outlined in Act 122 with respect to a projected fiscal yeah. year 21 yeah. deficit. Yeah. I think that that makes sense because yeah. it's still a projected, it's still a, a possible. Okay, on line, yes. on line 16. It's, it's line 18 and we're going to change it to such. Correct. To such projected depth. Okay, That's fine. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Do people want to see the language before uh, with the effective date? Um, looking to committee members specifically, if somebody wants to see it before we vote, um, raise your raise your hand. I seem to have lost all my list here. There, okay, got everybody. That looks like we're going to be okay. Um, so, can I have a motion on this language? And it would be, uh, you know, we we vote in in two steps. So uh, the first would be to endorse the language, and the second would be to amend S27 with it, so, um, or George. Yeah, I'll go ahead and move to um, pass the language as we have just amended. Okay. Um, okay. And that looks like Jim Maslin seconding. Two seconders. <laughs> um, and um, so Robin, are you ready to Call the roll. So, just to be clear, that the proposal is to um, uh, adopt the language in draft 1.4. No, it's not 1.4. I, I haven't got 1. it up 6. on my screen. Is it 1.5? So, in, in the amendment, it will be a draft 1.1. I don't know if that matters to that's you. Fine. No, that's fine. I, I just need, uh, Robin needs something for her yeah. record. So, uh, draft 1.1 1 .1, um, with two changes. We're going to add an effective on passage and we're going to change the word A in line 18 to such. Is that right? Done both. Okay. Uh, so that's the proposal. Uh, so they, yeah. So yeah. we're endorsing the language of draft 1.1 1 .1 of S27. Is that sure. right? Yeah. Okay. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Representative Anthony. Yes. Representative Beck. Yes. Representative Brennan, is he here today? He's not. No, okay. I haven't seen him anyway. Representative Donovan. Yes. Representative Kornheiser. Yes. Representative yes. Masland. Yep. Representative Shy is yes. Representative Till. Yes. Representative Young. Yes. Representative Canfield. Yes. Representative Ansel. Yes. 10-0-1. Awesome. That's great. Uh, all right. So um, a motion to vote S-27 out favorably as amended. Sure. Okay, Jim. 
and George. I'll Good. second it. Okay, <laughs> I'll just put you in reverse order. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Or she will never read my writing. Okay. So we're voting the bill out. Representative Anthony. Yes. Representative Beck. Yes. Representative Brennan is not here. Representative Donovan. Yes. Representative Kornheiser. Yes. Representative Masland. Yep. Representative Shy is yes. Representative Till. Yes. Representative Young. Yes. Thank you. Representative Canfield. Yes. Representative Ansel. Yes. 10-01. Excellent. Very good. Um, thank you, everybody. And thank you to all the people who joined us on search short notice and Craig, you particularly, because I know you had to redo a bunch of things to get here. So um, I appreciate that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna shift gears very briefly here. Um, and um, uh, mention another couple bills that I think we're gonna, we may get or we may not get, but I just want people to be aware of them. Um, one of them is the bill that has the uh, dispatch in it. And um, if you remember, we heard Bill Canfield asked us if we would look at the bill. Um, it's a bill, I think it's a racial justice bill. I haven't looked at the rest of it, but the, it included some uh, uh, dispatch fees or rates for dispatch. And the committee was sort of generally saying, we think those ought to be set by the legislature, not by the agency. Um, that bill may come in here. What they've done is they've Redone, they've rewritten it so that the um, any fees or rates will have to come back to the legislature to be set. So they basically did what we were asking them to do. Um, I just, uh, if we get it, um, we're going to have to vote it out very quickly. So I just want to alert the committee to it um, and kind of check in to see if people have any issues at all um, and questions about it or whether they feel like understanding that the rest of the bill is um, non-revenue and we're probably not even gonna be briefed on it. It's just, just need to move this piece out. Um, people have uh, concerns about that or questions or uh, uh, things that they would like me to do to prepare for uh, our moving that bill quickly if we do get it. I should put my participant list up again. Anybody? Uh, Bill? Yeah, Bill, hi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this thing isn't letting me raise my hand, I guess. Um, will, we have, will we have time to take any testimony on this? Uh, we may not. Um, and that's, that's really why I'm raising the question. Um, the, um, if, we, if, we, if you feel that we need to um, on the dispatch area, um, we should get it set up really soon and we should do it ahead of time. And I suppose we could do that at 11. Is, uh, who would you want to hear from? Well, I gave Sorsha a couple of names. There's a representative and then a <clears throat> fair even police chief did testify in um, GovOps. So yep. I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if he's a, eager to come back or not. We're not right. Sounds like um, we're, gonna, we're not going to do much with this. We're going to send it I, on. I, I think... So that's my hope, but it, it, I'm not, you know, I'm, um, it's up to the committee how they want to proceed with it. So that's why I'm raising it now so that we can be prepared if we need to be. Um, I'm sorry, I'm double tasking because I've got this appointment coming up too and I'm mm -hmm. trying to deal with it. Sorry. Um, do you want to uh, check with Sorsha and uh, see whether um, it was... Uh, but Shah, who had spoken, right? Who was right. interested in speaking? Will you mm -hmm. talk with him and see whether he still wants to speak on it? And and so that we can get it set up and get it set up quickly if we get the bill. Well, I'm sorry, are you asking me or Sorsha? Asking you to work yeah. with Sorsha to, to figure yeah. that out so okay. that so that we've got it all set anyway. So um, if he wants to, it would be at eleven o'clock. 
Well, we could, I don't know for sure if we're even getting the bill. That's, that's part of the puzzle here. Things are happening awfully quickly and I just don't know. Um, but if we could have it all set to go, if we do get it, we won't get it before 11 because we're not on the floor until two. Right. Um, Robin and Sam and Peter. Thanks, could you just remind me the number of that bill so we could look at it ahead of time if we wanted to? Um, I think it's- S124. 124, I was gonna guess 128, that would have been wrong. Um, and it's in go box right now. It's still there, okay. Yep. Yeah, S124. So, uh, Bill, you'll work with Sorsha so that we'll be ready if we do get it and if committee members could take a look at it. Um, the redraft of it has the recommendation for uh, fees or rates coming back to the legislature. That, that much I, I'm sure of. Um, Sam and Peter. Um. I, I guess I just want to say that I'm concerned about the just this setting of the fees that doesn't come back to the legislature at all. That it, it, the, though, so I'm, I'm sorry, but I probably haven't been very clear. Um, it's been rewritten so that they will come back to the legislature. Okay, well that alleviates some of my concern. Yeah, that was that was the concern I shared with Sarah. Um, okay. about our committee's discussion and she had her committee make that change. Okay, great. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear about it. Um, uh, who else did I have here? Peter. I'm okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, and the other bill, um, I've totally forgotten what it was. Oh, I know there was a bill that we will get, um, which is coming out of general committee. The Senate version of the bill had uh, tax credits. Um, it was this that neighborhood downtown tax credit program. Um, general committee has taken those out of the bill. I said, we didn't agree to do them. You know, it, we would definitely want to weigh in if, if they were in the bill. Um, so general committee has removed all the tax credit language. It has to come in to us because it's in the Senate version of the bill. So we'll get it no matter what. Um, again, I'm hoping that we can turn it around really quickly. Um, it won't have the version of it that uh, general committee has worked on does not have any impact on revenue. But, um, but the rules require that we look at it. And I should have the name number of that bill, and I'm not sure I do. Hold on. Um, it is H six seven. Oh no, that's a different one. Oh, that uh, one I need to bring up as well. Um, No, all I have here is, is General Committee's housing bill. I don't have the number. So um, maybe Sorsha, if you could find that for us and share it. Um, the final one is H674. Um, if you remember, the Ag Committee um, did a bill on current use that we took in the committee um, because it was current use. We agreed with the Ag uh, proposal. This was back in, I don't know, February, March, February. Um, it's now come back with the, from the Senate with some minor changes. Um, I think we went over them briefly. One of them is that um, in order to uh, be in current use, you have to be in good standing on taxes. Um, you remember that? And then there was one other minor change. Um, I What I'm hoping is that we're um, either silent on the floor on it, let Ag Committee say that they agree with the changes, or if we speak that we'll um, concur with what the Senate um, did. So are there questions about that bill um, that anyone has? Jim, is that what your hand is up for? Um, had, a, had a question on the on the tax credit um, business. Can, can, I, can I finish the thought on the Ag oh, stuff yeah. first? I'm sorry. Um, the other, did anyone have any concerns about the um, H674, the Ag current use bill and the Senate changes? We're all good on them. Okay, we got briefed on them a while back, but I think we were fine. Okay, 
good. So I'll convey that to the speaker that we're good. If we get called on, we'll say we're fine with them. Um, Jim Basel. Yeah, on, on removal of the tax credits in the um, general bill, um, I'd be curious to know what the background was that, but I can certainly wait until we get the bill, if we get the bill. We will get the bill, but the yep. version of the bill that we get will not have tax credits in it. Yeah. Okay. And just curious to know the background. That's all. Thanks. Yeah. Me too. Okay. Um, good. Anything else? Sorry, that was a lot of stuff. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. I understand that we're also going to get H uh, 952, which contains Burlington and Barry charter changes. Burlington apparently involves money. Okay. Um, so let's um, let's reconvene. Um, I don't know if we really need to reconvene at 11 because the, we won't have a floor session um, between now and 11. So nothing is gonna happen that I'm aware of. But if, if, if I'll be in communication with the speaker, if it makes sense for us to meet at 11, you'll get a note from Sorsha. Please just hold the time, um, but don't sign on unless you hear from Sorsha, is that okay? Okay, thank you. I'll see you all. Uh, sometime later. All right.